Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek Jain and through this video, I just bring on another very complicated product idea where we are going to automate the process of migrating a SSIS package to the Microsoft Fabric Data Analytics platform. SSIS stands for SQL Server Integration, which is again a Microsoft product only to build a ETL kind of solution. Microsoft Fabric, on the other hand, is a comprehensive list of multiple tools, kind of a analy data analytics platform where you can not only consolidate the data, but you can do all kind, all sort of magic with the data, right? So now we have to really understand this SQL Server Integration Service is kind of an on-prem infrastructure, meaning you have to just not only take care of building the SQL SSIS packages, but you have to maintain your own infrastructure as well. On the other hand, Microsoft Fabric is a SaaS-based solution from the Microsoft, which is a software as a service. So what happens? What, why do we need a SQL Server integration package in the first place? And why do we want to just migrate that to the Microsoft Fabric? So let's try to understand with the real-time example. Right. So let's assume that you have multiple sources. For example, you have some of your data into the database, some of the data in access to some of the data in the CSV form. And you want to consolidate and you want to apply some transformation to that and just put it in a data warehouse on a SQL set. So this is the SSIS package which I built. I just tried to have a lot of operation combined into that. So you don't have to worry about in just going uh, very depth into that. Let me just quickly explain. If you just see one of the sources Excel, and then we are putting into the one destination, right? Similarly, we have a, another source where we are taking a data from the CSV and then putting into the destination. And then eventually we are merging the S Excel data, CSV data into the another table, another basically another source. And from there, we are just put, doing some transformation and putting in the finally in SQL server, right? If I just wanted to show you how it looks like, you know, in a, uh, in a code word. So basically, whenever you build this SSIS package on Microsoft with the, with the using of a Visual Studio, then you actually build this XML file, which, which you can see on my screen. It's a very big file, but this is actually get appended or changed the moment you change anything on your SSIS package. So whatever the graphical representation you are seeing, it's actually get summarized here in an XML form. And that is where, you know, I thought that, you know, maybe I can just write my own XML parser through which we can extract all the component from the SSIS package and then try to map like what would be the equivalent component into the fabric cell. So let's get into the fabrics. So this fabric is a prior free trial version for 60 days for Microsoft. You can also just get a free trial version. And this is how it looks like. Here you have to just understand some of the terminology. We have to build our own workspace. And once you have that workspace, you can click on a new item. And these are the components which are, you know, bundled together in this platform. If you just see, we have data pipelines, you know, a lot of stuff which is actually related to the data analytics. And what they have done, they bundled it together and provided this SaaS to us so that we don't have to worry about not only the these packages, but we don't even worry about the infrastructure as well. So it's kind of a cloud. Related. So if somehow we can migrate this SSIS package you know, to this fabric. So basically we are just migrating our on-prem solution to the cloud native solution, right? And which is the demand and we can say it's a technology modernization which we are trying to do with this, right? As I mentioned, if you just wanted to do it manually, then you have to first understand the mapping, then you have to just understand the equivalent component, and then you have to come here in a fabric and you have to go. Then I realized this is the perfect use case to just understand if we can build an automation around, right? As always, you know, the moment I find this possibility to automate, my developer says that, yes, we can do it, right? And that is where, you know, if you just see, I started with a very simple mapping where I was just trying to map a very high level component from the SSIS package to the equivalent component on the fabric set. So control flow, data flow task, connection manager, parameter and expression, event handler, these are the main 
component on a SSIS side. You can see here, if you just see this design window of Visual Studio, we have control flow, data flow task, parameters, event handler, package explorer, and we have our expressions as well. If I just show you on the solution explorer, you can see all these things here, right? Package part, SSIS packages, connection manager, you know, all those kind of service I'm just talking about. Right, but the main thing which we should be we should be uh, more uh, you know focused on this DT DTSX as I mentioned. The moment you do any changes here on a design portal for a CSIS package, your XML gets changed, and which is actually going to be the input for our automation engine. And that is the automation which I am trying to put together. I am calling this a migration the engine. And then I did a little bit of research. Do we have any product existing in the market and what kind of problem is being faced by those? Right. So I think Azure is also providing some kind of migration, but you know, uh, still the manual intervention is needed because it's very, very complicated because the one I showed you, it's a very simple thing, but in a real time example, you will find a lot of, uh, you know, SSIS packages, which are way complicated with a lot of components involved. Right. So when I try to search, okay, is there any, uh, you know, uh, migration tool exists? So then the very first thing which I just come across is this. Kinerica, which is, you know, already partnered with uh, Microsoft. And I can see this because this is what they have mentioned. You can just read through all these things, you know, and the good part is here, they have mentioned why do you need to do this uh, fabric based, uh, you know, uh, migration, what kind of, uh, you know, advantage you want to get. And there are some in standard one, you know, improved performance scalability, reduce maintenance. And we know that if we, once we have a cloud native solution where we are getting a SaaS, and then a lot of, you know, infrastructure related stuff, we should not be worried about the security and all those kind of stuff, right? So that's very good, right? So what I have done, right? As always, I always try to just build a solution around Python, right? But before we get into the code part and just see in action, because I have already done a proof of concept where I just try to migrate a very, very simple, uh, you know, this SSIS package to Fabric side, which I'm just gonna switch. Uh, show which I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. But before that, if you are really interested to know a little bit more about my strategy and what I have done so far, I published four articles on a medium. And whenever you are going to watch, probably there would be many more because today is uh, 3rd of July, 4th of July. And as of date, we have these four different articles. You know, the first one is the SIS to Microsoft Fabric migration journey start. If you just read through, you will understand a little bit of thing like what I was doing. I was just trying to build my first SSIS package. You know, I've also built a one very end-to-end -end complicated pipeline on a fabric because if you want to migrate from one technology to another technology, in my opinion, you should know both the technology. At least if you cannot understand everything, at least you should have some understanding from both the technology if you really want to build a very effective and optimized solution, right? The third one is the ultimate cheat sheet. And this is where I did an exercise where I try to get it as much as deep I can to get, you know, what kind of component we have on our SSI side and what kind of equivalent component fabric actually provides you can read through this document and you can just find this information very valuable right the last one where i just share okay how i am gonna do the migration uh, automation for this like i want to run the ssis package parser tsql parser you know graph builder there are a lot of input, complicated things that i just think through it and i also take a help from the ai tools to just build this strategy but as a proof of concept, what I did, let me just quickly go to the code side because I know you guys will be very interesting in knowing what kind of code I have written and how it actually works. All right. So if you just see this structure on a very high level, we have this source code. Inside the source code, we have a fabric builder. In a fabric builder, we have two component, API client and the pipeline builder. And then we have a mapping and then we have a SSIS parser. So this SSIS, SSIS parser is nothing but which is going to parse our XML file and try to exclude, extract all the component in a SSIS package and thus go to the mapping, try to get the equivalent mapping and just try to build a pipeline builder, basically what kind of equivalent component we need and to build that to create that component on a fabric side, what should be the payload? So you have to understand the fabric API uh, uh, payload structure as well for each and every equivalent component. And then you can just make the request with the fabric client as well, which is a very high level, uh, you know, workflow, right? Then we have a main file where I have stitched together all this logic and then we can just run it. So let's quickly run this and see what happens. 
So the command is very straightforward. Uh, we what I'm doing here is let me just explain you. So this is my main Python file, and then I'm giving where my uh, package right where my package you can find, which is a sample underscore package, and I want to deploy it. So let's quickly run this. You know, it will ask me. Okay, it's already sign in. All right. So now it is going to create this. So let's quickly see this. This is the pipeline which is going to create it, which is uh, ending with 4231. Let's quickly go to the fabric and see whether this has been created or not. Let me refresh it. Okay. So now we can see this one. Let's click on this. Okay, so it will take a little bit of time and now we can see this is the internal component which is execute SQL task, right? How did it create it? And if you just see the very simple SSIS package, you can find here we have this data source here, right? Then we have this execute SQL task, which is my object name. The other object which you can see, we have a OL, OL, OLE DB connection, which is basically a database connection. So that's the reason we will be having a data pipeline inside that we will be having a source connection. So that part is still not yet done, but this is a very high level proof of concept where we can pause the XML, extract the component, which, you know, SSIS package is using, and that we can find the equivalent component of the fabric. Because if you just want to make a connection to bring the data, you have to create the data pipeline and which I showed you it's done. And then you have to see what kind of additional thing you have to do. You have to execute some SQL task before you actually start getting the data. And that is what, if I just go take you to the SSIS package designer pen, you can see here, uh, this is where I'm just first executing uh, some uh, SQL statement because I want to clean the table on the destination table. And then I'm reading through this uh, uh, data flow where I'm just making a connection to the Excel source, get the data, doing some conversion and just putting into the uh, uh, table. Right, so we have to truncate that, and same thing we have to do with the CSV data. Whatever my target table, I have to first truncate that. You can see I mean my truncate command here, and then we have this data flow where we are making a connection to the CSV source, doing a conversion, and putting it in the table. And then eventually we are merging both the output and just you know again creating another data flow where you know this data flow is having a lot of other transformation, and eventually you know once all the transformation is done, then it is getting into upload it to the main data warehouse, right? So this is a very high level thing. Right now, it looks very promising. Uh, you know, the simple uh, SSS package and successfully able to migrate to, you know, the fabric world. So it seems like we can easily do that, but I know it's way, it's gonna be very complicated because the package I took, it's a very simple one. And the, the one which I'm currently working and this is gonna be my next target to just migrate to the fabric completely. And once this is done, probably I would be, you know, done with a lot of complexity, which I can face, but definitely there would be many more because these packages are so complicated enough. Real time. I know this video is so long, but this cannot be a shorter because I have to cover a lot of things for you guys to understand. So this is really a very important uh, product use case. If anyone is interested in collaborating with me to build this solution, uh, you know, just uh, send me a request. I will give you the access to the BitLab repo where I have all the code reside, and we can collaborate from there to make this, you know, a successful product. And let's see how far I can go with this. And I would just look for some more active participation for the folks who are really interested to understand how this automation works, because a lot of things you will learn. You will learn an SSIS package, you will learn the Fabric, which is a very latest tool and technology, which is very important for all the folks who are actually want to make a career in the data science or data engineering or data analytics, whatever it is, you know, and from the technical perspective also, you will learn a lot. Right. So that's it from my side for this video. If you really like this video, give a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed for my channel, please subscribe for my channel. And as always, thanks for watching this. Stay healthy and keep learning new things.